Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Michael Kilduff. He says, James Bond Casino Royale loadout, the UMP9 silencer and nothing else, with the FN57 silencer and nothing else. Flashbangs, admittedly he didn't have these, but you need a grenade and these were the most tactical in my opinion. No gadget, stealth perk, forgot the name. You are James Bond, master spy. As you traverse the battlefield, use your wits to get the drop on your more powerful enemies. The silencer will certainly help, but obviously decrease range and velocity. Gulf of Oman is your only option for mid-range engagements because of the limited visibility. I think Final Stand has a map with a snowstorm, so that would maybe work too. If you see a crowd of enemies, Metro or Locker, use a flashbang to blind them and kill them as they run around aimlessly. Don't be afraid to retreat and have fun. This comment had over 1,600 upvotes, which is by far one of the most upvoted comments I've ever gotten on a loadout series. Now I really like this loadout because of its simplicity and stealthiness. The UMP is a very cool gun. I like the UMP-45, I like the UMP-9 as well. Without question, this is a terrible gun to use at range, so you have to get in close quarters. Using maps with low visibility can help, but I'll even say on Gulf of Oman with the Dust Storm, you will get shot from really long range, so you have to pick infantry intensive maps that have very, very close quarter combat. Here I've managed to find a nice little hiding spot in this stairwell while completely decimating the offensive push of the attacking team. Using the flashbangs in combination with both suppressed weapons make sure that the enemy team is always picking me as their last target and basically they don't figure out where I am until it's way too late. One thing you do want to be really careful with though is when you get a hit marker with the flashbang it does not guarantee that your opponent is blinded so sometimes you run in thinking you're going to get an easy kill with somebody looking around not knowing what to shoot at and often it's just a slight blind on their part and basically they're just waiting for you and they waste you so that's something you got to be aware of and you have to kind of judge of how good do you think that flash is on your opponent? The further away the flashbang went off from them, the less blinded they're gonna be, or it could actually damage them slightly, but damage them from behind, in which case it's not gonna flash them at all. So just be very careful when trying to read the hit marker on a flashbang, and once you get used to it, you can actually make a pretty good judgment call of whether or not your target is actually going to be disabled. And don't be afraid to use multiple flashbangs on one target. You do have three flashbang grenades, you can get them back from ammo boxes, so chuck as many as you feel are necessary. Now as far as the stealth field upgrade goes, it's really not the most useful. It does fit the theme perfectly, but the quick unspot is not all around that helpful. I would much prefer, say, the aggressive perk where you get the speed right away and then you get some more ammo later on. Because you are shooting suppressed weapons, you're probably going to live a bit longer than you're normally used to, in which case you're going to need a little bit of extra ammo. And I did spend a lot of my time with this loadout running around the map looking for friendly or foe ammo boxes. Using this loadout in rush servers ended up being a lot of fun. Rush usually pushes infantry right up against each other in some pretty intense combat, and being suppressed, being off that minimap, really allowed me to do some serious damage to the offensive team or be on the offensive team and get some good MCOM arms and disrupt the defensive side. Now, in many ways, I do feel like Propaganda is one of the best maps out there. Just offers some really good cover, some really good gameplay. Unfortunately, Rush isn't designed so well for this map, and I really I really think Rush is more of an issue with player count. Once you go beyond 32, you just run into mortar spam, UCAV spam, and no matter how much cover you have, you're always going to get blown up by things you can't really control. I will say though, if you are in a server where people are really abusing things like mortars or UCAVs or things that they need the minimap to spot you on, you will not be spotted on the minimap with a suppressed weapon, so mortar guys probably won't be targeting you. You certainly have to keep this in mind because if you're standing next to players that are shooting unsuppressed weapons and they start getting targeted by mortars then you could be collateral damage. Now as far as the iron sights go on this weapon there's no real point in using them over a red dot sight. They're certainly not too bad to use and as you can see from this gameplay here I'm not having too much trouble actually targeting my enemies even at medium range. Obviously we're using the iron sights for the thematic purposes of this loadout but it would be really cool if Battlefield had some sort of point loadout system where if you decided to give up some sort of optic on your weapon you will get an extra point to spend in other areas of the game. I realize that's pretty much a direct clone of the Pick 10 or Pick 13 system that Call of Duty uses, but frankly, it's a pretty darn good system for trying to balance your class. 
and you would probably see a lot more weapons in the game using iron sights so that they could spend their points elsewhere. This would be kind of cool and it would add a little bit more variety to the game. That's just my two cents though and we'll just have to see if future Battlefield games start integrating more interesting loadout systems. Now obviously we're playing the engineer here, it's the only way you can get to use the UMP9 and I will say there were so many times that I tried to switch to my rocket launcher as a gadget. I'm just so used to having my small at hand while playing the engineer and it really did pain me especially when I saw a lot of targets at range that I could pick off with the small not having it there. I was able to kind of tap fire the UMP9 at range especially if a target wasn't moving around enough or it was pinned down behind cover I could definitely get some kills but the UMP9 is certainly not an ideal long range weapon. The damage drops off down to 12.1 once you hit around 55 meters and that just means you're gonna have to shoot somebody way too many times to kill them. Now despite this being a really fun loadout to use in infantry game modes it was certainly the most effective in team deathmatch maps where if things are close quarters it's easy to move around quickly and get in your opponent's face. Here on Rogue Transmission I was absolutely tearing it up. It didn't hurt that my team was doing really well but I was just able to move around the map stealthily, the enemy team never knew when I was behind them flaking them and I could just go on these massive kill streaks. The UMP9 benefits just like the UMP45 from a 1.85 second reload. This is extremely fast for any primary weapon and makes it very effective in close quarter combat when you need to deal with multiple targets. You can take out one target and safely reload just to shoot a secondary target. You don't even have to worry about using your ammo too cost effectively. Aiming down sights is certainly preferred at medium range but in close quarters you can feel free to hip fire all you want. It's got a 1.0 hip fire accuracy which isn't the best in the world but it's way better than carbines and assault rifles. Now as much as I like the UMP9, my success on these servers wasn't really due to the fact that it's a great gun. It was more due to the fact that I'm using a suppressed weapon. I've played enough TDM, I've played so many freaking hours of TDM, that I can say with pretty much 100% certainty that the suppressor is the best possible attachment to have in this game mode. Moving around stealthily is going to keep you alive so much longer and allow you to get so many more kills than you would otherwise. And this certainly makes me think that the suppressor might be a little bit too too good of an attachment, at least in team deathmatch. And this could be a balance issue. It does make you think, you know, is the suppressor so powerful because it keeps you off that minimap, which is one of the game's most valuable tools? Should they perhaps redesign the way the minimap works? Maybe it should just reduce your signature so that only people within 20 or 30 feet of you will see on the minimap, but beyond that, they will not see your red triangle. Anyway, you guys know me, I'm always looking for different ways to try and balance this game. That pretty much wraps it up for for this episode of Loda, as you can see from the scoreboard, I had an awesome time playing with it. I can definitely recommend it. You'll probably want to throw a red dot sight on there and put an RPG in your kit as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing out.